Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about modifiers in Vue. A modifier is basically a suffix you can add to either the vOn directive or the vModel directive to add some functionality in line within the template. It is one of those nice features that Vue provides to help you write cleaner code. Now there are quite a few modifiers that Vue offers but I am going to go over some of the more commonly used ones in your day-to-day -day work. Let's take a look at a few examples. Now the first modifier is the trim modifier. If you want white spaces from user input to be trimmed automatically, you can add the trim modifier to the vModel directive. So in our job applicant form, in the name field, if I hit spacebar, and then type in Vishwas and add more spaces, you can see in the form values object, there are leading and trailing spaces. However, you might prefer having the white space removed before submitting the data or for some sort of a validation. To help with that, you can make use of the trim modifier. So back in VS Code, on the name input element, all you have to do is add a suffix to the vModel directive and that is dot trim. So vModel dot trim. If you now save the file and head back to the browser, hit the spacebar, you can see that those spaces do not get updated in the form values object. If I type vishwas, the data property has the trimmed value. If I click outside the input, the input text also has the white spaces removed. So this is our first modifier, which is the trim modifier. Pretty handy when filling forms. The second modifier is the number modifier, which ensures the given input is of type number. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say we need the job applicant to enter their age as well. So back in VS Code, in the data object, I'm going to create a new property called age and set it to null. Next, I'm going to add an input element to accept the age and bind it to this data property. Now to save us some time, I'm going to copy paste the HTML. So I've added age as the last field. The label is age. Input this time is of type number, id is equal to age and we bind it to form values dot age. If you now save the file and head to the browser, you can see that the initial value is null. In the age field, if I enter 25 and check the form values object, you can see that 25 is coerced to a string value even though we specified input type as number. Now this is simply because of how JavaScript works. However, in view, we can easily maintain age as a number field instead of a string by making use of the number modifier. That will ensure the input value is stored as a number. So back in VS Code, on the vModel directive, append dot number. If you now go back to the browser, refresh and enter age as 35, you can see this time the value is without double quotes around it. So 35 is stored as a number. All right, this is about the number modifier. The next modifier is the lazy modifier. Let's understand its usage with an example. At the moment, if I start typing in the name field, you can see that with every character that I type, the value is updated in the form values object. Now this makes sense if I need to display the name field live as it is being filled out. But most of the time, you only have to bind the data when the change event occurs. For that, we can make use of the lazy modifier. So back in VS Code, on the vModel directive, we can add dot lazy. 
Since we already have dot trim, we further append dot lazy. As you can see, modifiers can be chained. Now, if we save the file and go back to the browser, start typing in the name, you can see that it is not immediately reflected in the form values object. However, if I click outside the input, the value then reflects. So instead of binding on the input event, the lazy modifier will bind on the change event. Basically, the input text has changed and the input has lost focus. The lazy modifier helps improve performance as it doesn't bind on every keystroke of the input. It's also really useful when performing form validations and you want the user to finish entering the form field before the validation kicks in. All right, let's move on to the fourth modifier, which is the prevent modifier, which is an equivalent of event.preventDefault. At the moment, you can see that in our submit form method, we have event.preventDefault to stop the page from refreshing when you click on the submit button. What we can do instead is use the prevent modifier on the submit event. So let me remove the event argument and event.preventDefault from the submit form method. And in the template, on the form element submit event, add dot prevent as the modifier. If you now save the file, go back to the browser, fill in the name and click on submit, the form still does not refresh. The prevent event modifier works as expected. What this allows us is to define methods that are focused on the functionality rather than worry about DOM event handling. That would be taken care of in the template. This again leads to better code. Now the last modifier we will discuss is a key modifier. Let's say you want a method to be called when a particular key is pressed. In our case, let's say we need the form to be submitted when the enter key is pressed in the age field. Let's see how to achieve that. I'm going to begin by commenting out the submit button. Then on the age HTML element, add an event binding. Add key up is equal to submit form. However, we want the key up of just the enter key. So add dot enter as the modifier. If you now save the file and hit the browser, you can see that I can type in a name and hit the enter key and the form does not get submitted. I can type in age and press enter and now the form gets submitted. This is how a keyboard event modifier works in view. Now let me tell you, you're not restricted to just the enter key. You can add modifiers for tab, delete, escape, space, the arrow keys, control alt shift, and you also have mouse button modifiers like left button, right button, and the middle button. I'll leave that for you to explore based on the requirement you might have in your application. All right, that is about modifiers in view. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.